What's up everyone, it's Be The Installer and I'm here to show you how to hide the wires on your TV and home theater uh, without actually having to cut into the electrical and get yourself electrocuted. I'm gonna be introducing uh, the power bridge which is probably an, a tool that most of you would feel more comfortable with uh, installing in the wall versus the live wires. Uh, I'm gonna go over quickly how to put the TV up and how to place the power bridge in the right spot. Might run into some obstacles in this instance. I haven't even checked what's in the wall, but because the power outlets are too far left and right, it's pretty ideal situation to introduce the power bridge or uh, an item like it. Been in the industry for quite a while, so I think you're gonna get a lot out of the video. So make sure, stick around to the end, smash the like button when it becomes useful, and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Let's get into it. So first I want to go over the tools that we'll need for this job. You're not going to need all the tools if your TV is already mounted, but because the TV here is not mounted, I'm going to quickly go over all the tools needed for the installation and the power bridge itself. I don't think I mentioned that I'm installing a 65 inch Sony A90J OLED uh, on a mounting dream mount here. It's like a $40 Amazon mount that holds up just fine and I'm gonna have an Apple TV and a Sonos Arc connected to it I'm gonna hang the Sonos Arc under the TV later So that won't be part of this installation So things that are most crucial right off the bat are you know writing utensils pencils are great um, You'll need a tape measure to figure out where you are on the wall um, horizontally and vertically uh, you'll need a level to make sure that you can level across the wall and then you'll definitely need you know uh, drill bits and a drill of some sort. I have Milwaukee drill and a Milwaukee uh, powered screwdriver. Both are great. Then some of the other things that are pretty crucial, stud finder, uh, a fish tape if you need to pull the wires down. If there's insulation, that could be a problem. Uh, you'll definitely need a drywall knife to cut the drywall. Um, the handsaw is perfectly fine unless there's plywood, which is something I will talk about and may, you may run into and we'll figure that out. Uh, and then a ratchet and socket set to put the bolts in on the TV um, to make sure that the TV is secure against the walls. So let's get up on the wall and figure out where the TV is going to be because if you don't know where the TV and the mount are going to be on the wall, then there's no use in doing this power bridge beforehand. So you got to get that stuff done quick. I'll go through that real fast and then we'll get into the wiring. All right, so we're back up at top and I got the measurements on what we need to do here and I wrote them down because it's important. It's very important to find out where everything is before you start. So I have the center of this wall here, which is 98 and a half inches from that side. I measured it off the bed and the window here behind me. And that comes to 98 and a half inches from this side. This wall's shorter because there's the door on that side. So mark that as center. Okay. Then I measured where I want the bottom of the TV to be, and that is at 50 inches here. We're gonna have a dresser that's gonna be somewhere in the range of 38 inches. Another foot, you know, if we want knickknacks on there or whatever, you have to decide what you wanna do there. And then 50 inches, we'll put the TV up in this range, which is by a vent, not super ideal, but you know, I don't wanna have the TV too low. And then from the TV to the mount is the 16 inch difference right here. It's 13 and a half inches up to the brackets and then another two and a half inches from the brackets up to the top of the mount. So, you know, you have to figure out where your mount and brackets hit. So if you measure from the bottom of the TV to where the hooks clip on or the top of the bracket, just make sure you know that exact measurement because the mount will now sit in this range right here. And we have to work around that to make sure that the power bridge can sit in here and not be in the way of the mount. So finding the studs is definitely relevant. Um, we have to know where those are in order to put our square power bridge in here, right? We don't wanna cut right through a stud and then not be able to fit that in the wall, but it's also relevant for the installation of the TV mount. And you normally have like landmarks. Um, right here we have a air vent, so the air vent normally has a stud on the outside of it, and that will give us kind of an understanding that there's gonna be a stud right in this range here. So uh, I'll find the two studs real quick, pop that on. You wanna put it on where you think a stud isn't, and then rotate to where it is. There we go. So we have a stud right there. I'll mark it as an S. This is C for center. And then now we know about 16 inches is where the next stud will be. 
So those are two studs that I'll use for this job. Hitting both of these studs will actually get my center over here, so it'll be a few inches off. This mount has a little bit of wiggle room. I could shift it back a little bit on the brackets here because my pattern isn't the full 400 by 400, so it can slide over a little bit. Um, that is important. You know, you gotta make sure that you can get the TV where you want it in order for the power bridge and, and the wire management to be where you want it. So uh, I'm, I should be good. I'll be able to counterbalance the TV a bit. Um, it doesn't always work that way, so make sure you put this up first. But now that I have the two studs, I'm gonna mark the top of the mount and mark the studs a little bit taller so that I can put the mount up here and they'll hit and I can make my measurements. Now that I have my mount here and the marks, I can make sure it's pretty level here and then I'll make a mark on all four holes. And if you're going to do this before you do the power bridge, you can kind of draw the perimeter of the mount too. And that'll give you a good idea of where not to put the power bridge. So I could sneak it in a gap here. Um, I may not do that, but uh, I can't put it in this area unless it's gonna miss the mount. And you wanna do something like that because if you end up putting the power bridge right there, then you're gonna have a mount covering it and it won't work. So right before I put the mount up, I wanna double check where I'm gonna put the power bridge kind of relative to the TV. Because if I just put the mount up and then I have to work behind it, it might be a little more difficult. So I could put that power bridge in here because it's recessed, as you can see here. Um, it's gonna be really flat to the wall. And with an arm mount, you don't want that arm mount having to go back and hit your you know, wire management or your power outlet. But really it would just be kind of nice to just put it right in this area behind the mount. So that's probably what I'm gonna do, but let's open it up and see if it'll fit. So we have the actual dual power outlet and you know you can get this single one as well um, you don't really have to worry about how many power outlets you need because you really could just put an extension cord in here and then run that out and behind the tv you could plug in you know three or five things to you know a surge protector um, i got the dual just because i i do need at least two i'll probably have three things i think it's the tv the sound bar and the apple tv uh, but i'm not worried because I'll just plug it into an extension cord right here uh, and I'll have three things. But this is pretty deep. It goes in your typical, uh, you know, three and a half inch studs, uh, the bay that can fit that. So it, it will fit depth wise. It has these little flippers here that pull tight to the wall um, and hold the drywall. There's two of them. It would be nice to have four of them for a dual outlet like this. Uh, and then you have the inlet on the other end, which will be at the base of the wall. And before they used to have where you had to actually do the wiring, but now you just have a connection here where you just snap it into place and you're done. So that's pretty nice. If you have to go through uh, something like a fire block, that is not as easy with this being bigger. And I don't know if I'm going to have to run through a fire block. We'll see. That would be not really ideal for this situation, but it could be done. I probably could just drill a one inch hole and then that would go down through the one inch hole. I think this will fit nicely behind the TV mount and I'm going to go figure out how big of a hole to make so that I can um, get this ready. And this is great. Uh, we actually have cutouts for the two holes, so there's no guesswork. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and split these. This is the, the one that I need right now to see if this will fit behind the TV mount. And then this is the inlet at the bottom that will be where we extend the power cord from to the wall. So. I'm gonna hold on to these, don't lose these. This is the exact size you need and we're gonna go up there and measure on the wall. So as I said, I have this cut out. Now, the mount has about an inch bracket there, so I'm gonna miss that just like this. Make sure, I'm gonna be kind of in the middle because I know that it kind of curves at the top and the bottom, so you can grab a level as well to square this up, but you need to follow this cut out exactly. You can be a little smaller than the cut out, but if you're too big and it's bigger than the cutout, then your power bridge will just fall on the wall. So make sure that you mark this up and measure it exact around the edges. But yeah, definitely make sure that you cut this exact or a little small because if you cut it too big, you're in big trouble and that requires drywall repair and you might as well just pick a different spot to put it in because you're not gonna be able to succeed. And then down below here, we're gonna measure and put it at the same height as a power outlet so it's about 14 and three quarters. 
So I'm gonna go directly below where the power bridge is so that we run into as few problems as possible. And I'm gonna measure and put this top at 14 and three quarters, which it is. And then we'll mark that up as well so that we can have our cutout there. And so that's exactly where our cutout's gonna be for the inlet. And now we can cut them both and see if we have a clear path from top to bottom. All right, so drywall knife, again, make sure you're exact. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of dig it in and make sure that we have a clear path here. You'll find out in a hurry if there's plywood behind there because it's not very easy to push through the plywood. Okay, I did not have plywood, it's in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just make smooth back and forth cuts to get this square cut out. Get this top. All right, and now we're gonna go down here. And come back to the other side. All right, there we go, that was pretty easy. And I'm left-handed and this is my right hand, so camera was set up this way. I figured, let's just get it done. Cut it wrong-handed, still worked okay, it wasn't very difficult. So it was right next to a stud here. That stud is where I thought it would be. Uh, I probably should have gone a little bit more to the left, but these uh, clips are on the top and the bottom, so it's not gonna be a problem that the stud's right there. So now there's two things you could do. One, you could just go down there and cut the bottom hole. But two, you could put your phone in here upside down and shine the light down and make sure that you have a clear path to the ground. That's very useful. If you have a fire block uh, and you're like, ah, I can't do this, then at least you'd only have one hole to repair instead of two holes to repair. So I'll take a peek real quick and make sure that I have a clear path or see what's down there. So turn my camera on. Don't need a picture of myself. All right. Turn the flash on and we can check it out. Ooh, a lot of spider webs down there. And also there is definitely a fire block. So not a great situation. I will have to cut through that. And that means you guys are gonna get a little bit more than you bargained for and see how I would cut through a fire block. Boo. So I can still cut the hole down there, but I'm gonna just get through this fire block first. And the best way to do that is to measure where it is on the wall here. So I'm just gonna take my tape measure and stick it down the hole and find out how far down from this hole is that fire block. So there you go, it's about 11 and a quarter inch from uh, this hole. So I will just measure 11 and a quarter on the outside and scrape the wall right here. And that is where the fire block is. So we have our mark here and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna take a drill bit and I'm gonna drill a one inch hole right in the drywall, a couple inches above the fire block, and then I'll show you how I drill through that at an angle to get us below that level, and then we can fish our wire through that hole down to the bottom, and we'll be good. So uh, it's gonna take a little bit more work here, but let me show you that process right now. First, I kinda angle the drill bit downward a little bit, and I'll just drill. It's gotta be up above the fire block though, because if you do it at the fire block, you're gonna run into it. So I'm gonna go about two inches above the fire block and cut, uh, this is a one and an eighth inch bit right now, I'm gonna make that hole. All right, so there's that hole, and that's perfectly two inches above there. And you can make the hole a little bigger if you need to, just so you get a little room in there, so. There we go. And I'm gonna fix this hole in a little bit, it'll be really simple to fix. Uh, I'll show you how to do that too. Now that I have this hole here, I could do a couple different things. One, I could just use a larger bit than the actual harness that I have to send through. So if I was just gonna make one hole, obviously I have to make it be a bigger hole than the harness that needs to fit through. But because this is flat, I also could take the one inch bit, which is longer, and I could go down and I could have a little bit more control over where I wanna make this hole. And I could put two holes next to each other and then fit the harness through the two holes which is what I'm gonna do. There's also a case to be made to cut this area out above and below the fire block and then work and finish it and then put this drywall back in and fix the drywall. But that's not very quick and it's not gonna really work for this install. I'm not gonna take the next hour and show you how to do this. So I'm gonna actually use this one inch bit, make two holes next to each other. They gotta be uh, touching each other in order to get this harness down and then we're gonna move on. So there's the fire block and now I'm gonna go ahead and get my drill bit in there at an angle 
And if you need more of an angle, you can, you know, grind this out a little bit more right here and give yourself a little bit more vertical space, which I can do right now. So if I give myself a little bit more vertical space, then I can make the, the drill bit go straight down and I'll just drill straight down through the fire block. All right, so I'm through, I cut through it. Uh, there's two holes, one in the back there and one in the front. That hole right there ended up hitting um, a nail. So you gotta be careful if you're close to the studs right here because the nails come sometimes out of the studs into the fire block. So I'm through though, and the, the important part is that I have a hole that is definitely big enough for that to go through. Uh, so I can manipulate the power bridge wire through this hole down here and then Eventually, it'll come out down at the hole below and we can connect it over. So that was basically how to get through a fire block. Now, if you just need to get electrical through that, you're good. If you need to get HDMIs through that, maybe you have to make two holes, one over here and one there. Um, I think what a lot of people have a problem with is that they're concerned on how to fix this hole. But realistically, it's not that difficult to fix drywall. And I'll show you that right at the end. All right, so we're good on the top and we're good at the fire block, so we're gonna cut this hole out and get this accomplished. And I ran into the stud again there, so we'll just go a little bit to the left. Again, make sure that the hole's not too big, but we're good if we just go over a little bit. There we go. So now we can get our wires in here. So the next step will be getting the wire down here, connecting it up, and then pushing it back in the wall. So let's go and start with the top first. So let's check and see how much slack we have. So this is a good six feet, as my wingspan would tell us. And we wanna get it in here through that fire block hole and to the bottom. Now, you could just drop it if there's nothing in the wall. Uh, I do have that fire block, which is a little tricky to navigate. So we'll just hand feed this to the next hole because it's really close. All right, and we'll just set it up here right now. I'm gonna eventually push it in and that hole might not be big enough. We might have to go a little wider, but We'll figure that out in a second. Let's see if I can push it down the hole and get it to come out at the bottom. All right, so with a little finagling down the wall, I found it at the bottom and that is super awesome because that means we've made our route from top to bottom and yes, we have some drywall to repair, but we are done with this part. So because I'm down here and I wanna get this finished, I'm going to go ahead and connect these uh, two pieces. They're opposite, so you just go ahead and slide one over the other. Now let's get this done. All right, push it on, there we go. It's locked in place. And now we gotta backtrack some of it in the wall in order for this to fit uh, where it needs to go. And there we go. Now if you wanna avoid painting, you can, uh, Erase any mistakes that you may have made like I did there. All right, before we get too far here, I have to remember that we have to put the HDMI cords in now. Be a lot more difficult to run the HDMI cords in later when we can't see anything, right? So uh, I'm gonna just put one HDMI cord in so you guys can see how it's done. I don't really need it for my purposes. I'm gonna have the Apple TV hidden. So really this is just a power solution for me, power bridge. But it does have this nice area where you can put uh, your HDMI cords or whatever kind of cords you need to. Anything that's not high voltage, you can't put the power cords inside the wall, which is why we have this power bridge. But I'll have to feed it into this hole, down, out of this hole, back through the fire block and out the bottom. So I'll just feed it from this hole first down to the hole I made for the fire block. And then I can quickly feed it down the wall and I'll pull some slack uh, down. I want slack on the top and the bottom. You can always use a zip tie to cinch it up at the top and the bottom. And then down here, 
there we go. It just popped right out and we're good. So we'll move that aside and first we will send it out the back of this uh, inlet or whatever you want to call it. Um, pop it through there and give us some slack. And now we're in a pretty good position to just finish this bottom part up because, uh, you know, this is, we're all finished down here. We got some drywall on top to fix. So let's go ahead and, and feed this back in. It's good to keep this piece down here at the bottom. If it ever disconnected or something happened, you know, you could always uh, get easy access to it. So I'm glad they made it that way. We'll feed it over and we'll get this ready. Now, when it comes to, you know, getting this box put inside the wall, you have to remember you only have one of these boxes uh, for the inlet. So we don't want to snap this plastic. If you get too aggressive with the power tool, you can snap it. So let's go ahead and put it in like that. So I'm just going to finish off with this screwdriver and square it up a bit, you know, so it's, it's level. And then I'm going to, when I feel tension, I'll stop uh, tightening this so that I don't snap that wire. So there we go. We had some tension there. Let's even it out with the bottom screw. Tighten this one up. There we go. Nice and simple. Easy done. You can pull on it to make sure that it's good and, you know, a little extra slack never hurts. So now we'll go up to the top and finish the top section. So up here we have our wire. Uh, we have some excess. We'll push that back in the wall because I'm going to fix that drywall. And then now, like I had said, we can push the rest of this out the front of that box. It's probably too much for the top. Uh, I'll pull the rest of the slack down through the bottom. There we go. So now we have, you know, four or five feet on the top and the bottom. And let's go ahead and push it in. All right, good to go. And now we'll tighten this up with the screwdriver again. Put a little tension on it. There we go. Let's see. Does it need to be tightened a little more? No, oh, looks good. Uh, you know, as long as it's snug, you don't want to over tighten it. All right, so we're good. And we have the top box in, the lower box done. And now really, we just have to fix this drywall. But before I fix the drywall, I want to make sure this actually works. You can see, uh, maybe you can't see it, but there's a little green uh, light there. I want to make sure it has power. At least if we check it now, we'll know we're in a good spot before we fix this drywall. We have that power cord that came with this. Literally looks just like an extension cord. Uh, and we'll plug this side in over here. And then we'll plug this into the power outlet. And, you know, right off the bat, I can see we got a green light right there. So. Uh, we are good to go. We have power on this end. Let's check the top quick. Up there you can see we also have power. And I'm pretty stoked. Uh, this project has gone pretty smoothly. Except for that sucker, right? Not so much fun to have to fix drywall in the middle of a TV install. But that's okay. Things happen. We'll make quick work of that. And down here, you know, this cord, it's a little bit of an eyesore, of course. But you have to make these decisions. Are you willing to do the electrical or are you okay with seeing this wire or, you know, it being behind a dresser? We're going to have a dresser here. It's not here yet. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'm fine with it once it's hidden. So uh, put a little zip tie on this, hold it up, put the dresser behind it. You'll never see it. All right. So let's get this drywall fixed. Five minutes or less. We'll be good to go. To fix this hole here, we need a few things. We need some mud, I have some Fast Light 5, I think it's called, from Home Depot. A couple drywall knives, a little pan to put the mud in. Then I have this box cutter type knife. And what I'm gonna do first is kind of cut the edges to make it nice and clean. We don't want any of this loose uh, drywall sitting there. So I'm gonna you angle it out. and cut a little bit around it so that it's nice and clean. There we go. So now it's a nice clean hole there and we can just mud it. So we'll grab some mud, you know, maybe a cup of mud or so, a cup of the dust here and uh, I'll go mix it up and I'll bring it back and show you how to get your first coat on there that's gonna kind of plug that hole. All right, so I'm back and I have this mud. It's nice and thick. 
uh, and now I can put it in the hole there and get my first coat. To get the first coat in there is very important. Uh, it'll, you know, once it's dry, then you can flatten it out, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, and make a mess of it. Kind of feed it into the hole. Now this hole is about as big as you can do this with, uh, but I swipe away from the hole on the top and the bottom and kind of just plug it up. You can use some mesh if you think that it's not going to hold. Uh, you know, time after time, this has been a perfectly good method for me. It's never caused any issues. All right, so there you go. The first coat of that mud is done. And we can move on to putting the bracket on and putting the TV on. I can always come back and fix this later. We have our holes. Now we can fit the TV mount right over the top. Let's get that done quickly, hang the TV and get our finished product. So most of the TV mounts require a quarter inch hole. So I'm gonna use that, the larger ones anyways. Uh, make sure you check with the TV mount you're using and get the proper hole. We'll drill the top two holes so we can get it level. If I drill all four holes, then sometimes the mount isn't level. So we'll do the top two first put those on and then we'll put the bottom ones in. And to make this part go faster, I have my socket and one half inch, uh, you know, socket on the, on the end of this adapter that goes into my drill. So one of those nice little uh, tricks for us installers to make it go faster. So let's go ahead and put the mount up. I'll situate it in a second here. I'm just gonna get it started. Pull this out. Get that HDMI cord out of the way before it gets destroyed all right and now we want to get it over as far as possible that way so I pushed it over and we'll tighten these two up so now I'm gonna hand tighten it make sure it's level ish no you want it pretty level so we'll raise that side up just a little there we go and now we'll tighten it the rest of the way We go that side's good all right so there we go we're nice and level now that we're level I can drill the bottom two holes we'll angle them up a little bit so that you don't hit the bracket same on this side and put the bottom two in And then we'll hand tighten those as well just to make sure they're snug. That one's good. All right. Oh, that is, that's on there. If it can hold my big butt, it can hold the TV. So all we have left to do is fix that drywall. I'm gonna do that later. We're going to hang the TV up, plug things in. And to do that, I need my trusty assistant, the very popular Jen to help me lift this TV up. So I will go summon her. Okay, so the power went out while I was getting Jen, so now San Diego's out of power. No. It wasn't me, I promised, with the electricals. That's why I'm not messing with the electricals. So I got the big guns in, as I had said. We're going to lift the TV up, put it up here, and then make all the cords disappear. Let's do it. Go ahead. Oh, just if we can go, go. Yeah, we're good. This is a light TV. Yeah. <laughs> After lifting all those 83-inch TVs, this is nothing. It is actually quite light. And this is a heavier of the 65s, so. Oh, I thought you said it was that easy, easy, easy peasy. I'm still only five feet tall. Yeah, I was gonna say, the camera can see right over your head. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. You are released, released. Peace. All right, now we just have to throw the power cord on and plug the HDMI in and we'll be set. I'll turn it around and show you the clean look. Make sure you screw the safety pins in. You don't want your TV to fall. All 
All right, I'm all complete. Beautiful looking TV. And what once looked like something like this with all the wires, now clean just because I added the power bridge and got through that fire block and made it look nice. So all good, even below it looks nice and clean. I'll, I'll have a dresser to cover that power cord eventually and I'll have a sound bar here, but as you can see the Apple TV, TV looks great. I hope you enjoy the video. Make sure to smash the like button and let me know below if there's something that's preventing you from doing a job like this or questions you have, definitely let me know. Make sure to subscribe and set the notification bell to all. And just like that, you can be the installer.